Hello and welcome to how to play Sudoku. This is a advanced level to teach you how to play the advanced level games of Sudoku. Uh, I've got a brand new board in front of us. This level here is called Annoying. Super. And we're going to learn some of the strategies and how to do it just by playing the game. So if you watch the other um, tutorials that I've done, you know that um, how to fill in the pencil marks and how to do all the obvious things. So we're just going to go ahead and fill in the pencil marks. And we're also just going to go ahead and fill in the things that are pretty obvious. First, we know step one, we look for singletons. So there's a three on the lower right. I see a one. Um, and then we start to go through each individual number, just looking for something that can only be uh, all by itself in a row, a column, or box. So here is a one that, and, and again, the pinks are highlighted, so you know where the, where the other ones are, pencil mark. So there can only be a one possible place to put a one in that box that makes a one only one possible place to put it in that box and if you look at this row here there's only one place we can put a one which then allows us to only put a one in this column that's right there and then we finish the ones there let's move on to twos we see that there can only be one place to put a two in that box now it opens this up for us and it opens this up for us and this up for us and this up for us we've solved the twos this is a lot I wouldn't call this level annoying at the rate this is going. Let's look at the threes just to go through. Um, uh, nothing obvious. Let's look at the fours. Now well, we can solve a four here and a four here and a four here. Well, it looks like we've got the fours solved. Hmm. Okay, wasn't this puzzle is not as annoying as I thought it was going to be. Let's look at the fives. Well, we know a five can go there. And it looks like that's the only alpha oh, five can go here. And that is the only, uh, well, okay, let's move on and we'll get back to another thing in a second that I can see. Uh, let's look at the sixes. Yes, I can see, okay, so in here, no, sixes, all right, well, that's something we'll get back to in a second. Here's the sevens. All right, so in the sevens, for example, we see that in this second box, there's a seven here and a seven here, and then there's a seven down here. Since a set, we know there's a, a seven must go here, this obviously can't be a seven, therefore that's the seven. Um, if you look down at the very last column here, you see a seven five and a seven five, and here is a seven eight. A seven and a five must go here, and the other seven five must go here, therefore there can be no seven and five here. That must be an eight. That clears that up as a seven. Uh, let's keep going. Let's take a look at the eights. Well, we've actually got the eights nearly solved. And then let's look at the nines. Uh, the nines look like they're uh, still a lot of work to go on them, but we'll get back. Although let's look here at this column number nine, six, nine, six, nine. So we know that no other six, nine can go in that column. Well, there's six, nine, and three. Therefore, that must be three. Uh, and as I do this, I usually like to do it a few times. So again, the ones were solved. The twos were solved. The threes, we've now actually opened up the board to see that a three is going to go there. And now we see that a three can only go in this row. So a three must go there. Let's move on to fours. Fours were solved. Fives. Uh, are almost solved, and we'll get to that in a second. Six is still making progress. I don't see anything sort of obvious jumping out at me. Sevens. Um, okay, so in the seven, again, in this particular uh, row, the seven must go here and here. It's the only place in this row it can be. Therefore, we can remove the pencil mark of that seven. <coughs> Let's check out eights. Oh, that's right, they're finished. And let's check out nines one last time. Okay, so now that we've gotten past the um, sort of the most basic stuff, now we can start to look at the more intricate ways in which we're going to solve this board. Uh, in the nines, what we see here is a nine in this particular row. Um, and there's no other place in this row a nine can be. Therefore, this and this cannot be a nine, so we can take out those pencil marks. 
And I also want to further look and say that here we see we have a 3, 6, and 9 as the only three things here. And since we know that a 3, 6, and 9 must go here, we know that then this 6 cannot go there, so we can remove that pencil mark. So now let's move on to our more advanced strategies. The first thing that jumps out at me is the, a lot of 7 and 5s. And when I actually look at this row here, I see that there is no 7 and 5. In fact, a 5 can't be uh, in this particular column in this uh, uh, up top, but a 5 can go here and a 5 can go there. A 5 is going to go on either side of this. But we also have these two 7 and 5s here. So here's what we know. We know that a 5, and a, because we have a 7 and a 5, and a 7 and a 5, we know that one of these is going to be 5 and one of these is going to be 7, but we also know that we're going to need to put a 5 up here and up here and up here. And so if you do this logic, you're going to realize, okay, so 5 has to go here or here, or, the, or it's going to go here. A 5 has to go here or it's going to go there. What this is creating is a situation where we can determine that since a 5 has to go here or here or here or here, or again here, we're, this, since it's a 7 and a 5 that must go here and a 7 and a 5 that must go here, we're actually able to say that there's no way a 7 can be anywhere but here or the middle, here or here. Therefore, you see this 7 right here. There can't be a 7 here. There's too many other places where a 7 can be. So we're going to actually be able to remove the pencil mark of that 7. And by doing so, we now know that the se if we look at the 7s, now 7 is the only place it can go into this column. So we can put a 7 there. Whoops. Let me do that again. Remove the pencil mark. I meant to put a 7 there. And now it clears up the 5. Um, and it also clears up the 9, and it clears up the 3, and it clears up the 7, and it clears up the 5. And have we solved this board? I believe we have. Okay, so I was hoping there was going to be some more uh, difficult strategies to discuss, but it looks to me like the only one was that concept. So what I want you to re remember is how when you see that there's going to be a 5 and a 7, on the uh, two numbers that are the same on the, on, on the opposite side of a box, plus you have other places where they can be, the other spots that have the 5 and the 7 can't be, and therefore they can be removed. If you have any questions on this, you can go ahead and leave me a comment. If you have any other questions overall on how to solve advanced Sudoku, Sudoku levers, levels, just 